Hello and good afternoon on Tuesday. Um, my name is Steph and I normally work at Melksham Library and I just want to share the next 15-20 minutes with you, um, reading a little bit of poetry with you. Um, I hope you're all comfortable, I hope you've all got a drink. Here's my cup of coffee in a suitable poppy festooned mug. Um, my poems today are going to be inspired by nature, so I thought the poppy mug was most appropriate. Um, I've also got something maybe to snack on. I've got my lovely piece of flatjack, which I made a few days ago, so I'm going to be enjoying that later. I don't know whether you've got a nice bit of cake or a biscuit to, to munch on whilst I'm reading. Um, I hope you do. Um, I know Phil said last week that his favourite biscuit was fig rail. Maybe you'd like to share what your favourite biscuit or cake is with me. And um, yeah, so um, thank you again for tuning in. And I'm going to start, if I may, with a poem by Wordsworth. Now, I was hoping to get some, a bunch of daffodils for this. Unfortunately, we seem to just pass over daffodil season. So I have to have my beautiful tulips. I particularly love these tulips. I've had them a few days now. They're a beautiful colour. Um, so, but I'm, I'm actually going to be reading words with I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. So his famous daffodil poem. And it's a lovely poem, this one. I really love this. Um, it's famous for, for good reasons. Um, he's out walking. He's inspired by this field of daffodils that he comes across. And at the end of the poem, he does talk about how he can think back about these, these daffodils and how they can fill your heart, you know, looking back and thinking back. So anyway, just get yourself comfortable. And I'll say, this is I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle in the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, where on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. It really is such a beautiful poem and and I think especially at this time when maybe some of us have, haven't been out for a while or, you know, the, the thought of kind of just thinking back to a memory, a, a scene of bliss or something that we really love to go and visit. I'm missing madly um, the kind of Linton Limba and the North Exmoor Coast because that's a place that I do like to go and visit regularly throughout the year. I haven't been for ages, so I'm really missing that bit. And I think, as I say, his, his poem talks about that, just thinking back about this field of daffodils. So I'm going to move on now to another one, and this is um, a request from one of our listeners, from Liz, and she um, loves this one. It's called The Loveliest of Trees, and it's by A.E. Houseman, and it's about the cherry tree. Probably would have been slightly more appropriate to have read it last month. Um, it does mention Easter, so it's more of an April kind of um, poem. But I'm going to read anything. So it's a request from from Liz. And hi, Liz. I've got just a message to say. I'm Liz Moss Cooking. So Liz, this is for you. The loveliest of trees. Loveliest of trees, the cherry now is hung with bloom along the bough, and stands about the woodland wide, wearing white for Easter tide. 
Now of my threescore years and ten, twenty will not come again. And take from seventy springs a score, it only leaves me fifty more. And since to look at things in bloom, fifty springs are little room, about the woodlands I will go to see the cherry hung with snow. And that's by E. A. E. Houseman. So I'm going to move on from trees and plants and I'm going to move on to um, a poem about a little bird. And this is about a wagtail, which um, some of you are might be familiar with the, the, the various wagtails. So you have the pied wagtail, which is very common, and of course the grey wagtail. And they're quite cheeky little birds. Obviously their tails do wag up and down, hence their name wagtail. And, and they're really quite fun to watch. And this is quite a, a, quite a cheeky little poem, um, which was by John Clare. So he wrote this in the early 1800s, and it's called Little Trotty Wagtail. Little Trotty Wagtail, he went in the rain, and tittering, tottering sideways, he ne'er got straight again. He stooped to get a worm, and looked up to catch a fly, and then he flew away, ere his feathers they were dry. Little Trotty Wagtail, he waddled in the mud, and left his little footmarks trample where he would. He waddled in the water, pudge and waggle went his tail, and he chirruped up his wings to dry upon the garden rail. Little trotty wagtail, you nimble all about, and in the dimpling water, pudge, you waddle in and out. Your home is nigh at hand and in the warm pigsty. So little Master Wagtail, I'll bid you a goodbye. And that's by John Clare. Now I couldn't do um, some poetry about nature this week without including one about nettles. Um, in case you didn't know, it is um, Be Nice to Nettles Week next week, starting on Saturday, and it's Nettle Appreciation Day on um, the 20th of May. So do check out, they have a website, Nettle Appreciation website, and this is just a short poem about nettles. It's by Edward Thomas, who was writing in the late 1800s and into the 1900s. I say it's called Tall Nettles. It's quite a short one. Tall nettles cover up, as they have done these many springs, the rusty barrow, the plough, long worn out, and the roller made of stone. Only the elm but tops the nettles now. This corner of the farmyard I like most, as well as any bloom upon a flower. I like the dust on the nettles, never lost, except to prove the sweetness of a shower. It's quite a short one about nettles, and it's just about how they grow up and they can cover up. And if you, you can just imagine it, if you ever go out into walks in the countryside and um, past a yard that might be, have some old rusting farmyard equipment and the nettles are grown up amongst other things to kind of cover it up and that's what this, that poem is inspired by, you can just picture that. I'm going to move back on now and I'm going to do another one about trees. Um, so if you bear with me, I will turn to my, because this, I couldn't, I, I love trees. I'm a real tree, a bit of a hippie tree hugger at heart and I do love trees. I'm so lucky that I can look out my window here and I can see my apple tree in my garden and there's a huge sycamore tree that, that just beyond my garden. I know some people don't like sycamore trees, but it still is a, a fantastic place where lots of birds make houses in there. And I've got my neighbour's silver birch tree amongst other trees that I can see. So I'm really lucky and I love trees. And this is a poem by Joyce Kilmer um, called Trees. It's quite a simple one, but I think it's really lovely. And it's about trees, so I'm obviously biased. Okay. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowering breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair. Upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made 
by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. And so that's by Joyce Kilmer. Now I'm going to move on. I'm going to move across the Irish Sea to Ireland. And this is a poem that was written by Yeats. Um, Yeats grew up, his childhood was in County Sligo, and he has a real love. Uh, he also had a lifelong love of, of his home uh, land there, in Yates County. And um, he wrote this poem. He was living in London, and apparently one day he was walking along the London streets, and he suddenly had um, a memory of his childhood um, on a, a lake isle, uh, in particular, um, just off a place called Loch Gill. So it's an island at the south coast of Loch Gill in County Sligo. And I had to include this because my husband is from Sligo and I've been there. So, and this is lovely. So this is by W.B. Yeats. And it's classed as a lyrical poem for those who are interested in types of poetry. So it was a little bit later than most of the other kind of romantic poets, but it's still sort of classed as a, a lyrical poem. Okay. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree. And a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight's all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day. I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. And while I stand on the roadway, or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. That's by W.B. Yeats, The Lake Isle of Innisfree. Now, I thought I couldn't resist including this one. This is a poem that you will have heard of. Um, it's actually anonymous. I'm not quite sure who actually originally penned these words. It's a well-known folk poem and it was obviously you know really made well known by um the musician simon and garfunkel and it's beautiful uh, scarborough fair with the past is sage rosemary and time now simon and garfunkel did slightly tweak the the words that are mostly uh, produced when looking at poetry and um, to fit their their music um but i'm going to stick to the to the slightly more original ones not that we know exactly what the original ones were, because we don't know who the original poet was. But here you go, so this is Scarborough Fair. Where are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Remember me to a bonny lass there, for once she was a true lover of mine. Tell her to make me a cambric shirt. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme without any needle or thread worked in it, and she shall be a true lover of mine. Tell her to wash it in yonder well, parsley sage, rosemary and thyme, where water ne'er sprung nor a drop of rain fell, and she shall be a true lover of mine. Tell her to plough me an acre of land, Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme Between the sea and the salt sea strand And she shall be a true lover of mine Tell her to plough it with one ram's horn Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme And sow it all over with one peppercorn And she shall be a true lover of mine Tell her to reap it with a sickle of leather, parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme, and tie it all up with a tom-tit's feather, and she shall be a true lover of mine. 
tell her to gather it all in a sack. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme and carry it home on a butterfly's back. And then she shall be a true lover of mine. It's just so lovely. I just love I just love so much about that. The I love the butterfly back. I love this this idea of you know so it with one peppercorn and just it just brings in so much beauty from nature, I think, in this and things growing and it's just lovely. Um I'm gonna finish off now because because it's gosh, it's, yeah, time is ticking. It's amazing how quickly the time's flying when you're reading poetry. And um yeah, I'm gonna finish. Now this poem I, I couldn't resist using it. Phil, um, my colleague from Salisbury, for those of you who may have tuned into his readings last week, he he read this last week, and I and I really like it, and I was planning to use it because it's in here in my book of poems on nature, which is a lovely little book um, of all sorts of poems, and it's casting various seasons throughout the year, so it's it's really lovely. There were so many more that I could have chosen from here, um, um, but it's it's leisure, and it's just particularly it seems to be particularly poignant at this time. Um, for a lot of us, time has slowed down a little bit. Some of us are, are working frantically busy, and of course, the people on the front line and some of the healthcare workers, obviously, they're really working flat out, and, and all thanks to them. But this is a poem called Legend, and it's by W.H. Davies, and I just wanted to finish on this one um, because it is rather lovely, and as I say, it's just quite time at this moment. So I hope Phil doesn't mind me rereading it out. Okay, Leisure. What is this life if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. No time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight, streams full of stars like skies at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this, if full of care. We have no time to stand and stare. That was Leisure by W. H. Davies. So that brings me pretty much to the end of this afternoon. Um, it's been lovely um, that some of you could join me. And um, I hope you enjoyed some of the poems. Do let me know um, if there are any ones that you haven't heard before, maybe, or ones that you particularly liked. And you know, do let me or Phil know, my colleague, know in Salisbury of any poems that you particularly love and that you would like us to include. Um, next week at 3 o'clock, uh, again, Phil will be leading some um, tea and chat and a bit of poetry maybe a bit of prose and that will be coming from Salisbury Library and then um, the week after that so that's two weeks today I should be back here again um, doing a little bit more of this so I hope you enjoyed your tea here's I'm going to wrap my, my coffee and uh, yeah thank you so much for joining me and have a good rest of the day and if you can get out there it's a beautiful sunny day we're in, in Bath at the moment I hope it's nice where you are but do get out enjoy nature and um, yeah, just really appreciate the plants around you, the seasons, the trees, the blossoms, the birds, the butterflies that are buzzing around. But you take care and speak to you soon.